ab workout for today is guess what? My shoulder. And I am showing you the exercises inside weeks 11 and 12. So in this stage, I'm, at, I'm actually inside week 12. So I've done 11 weeks, I'm in my 12th week. So I'm nearly there, if you like, as far as week 13 starts the real deal exercise. So at this point, we're sort of doing some preliminary exercises. We're trying to add on a little bit of load. There's a bit of stability. There's a bit of eccentric training. And there's a little bit of hard sort of isometric work inside this program. So I'm going to show you some of the 16 exercises that are strengthening. So there's two sets of eight. But I'm going to show you some of those that are quite interesting in what we're doing this week. First one. The scapula press, because most people have got a bit of winging going on. Now, the winging will be better by this stage, but you need to get some strengthening work in that serratus anterior. And in a four-point exercise, the first thing you're going to do from last week to this week is put on a band, put on some load, because we're not doing a massive amount of single leg arm sort of loading work. The safest way to do this inside this week, where my tendon's recovering, is double hand. So going into all fours like this, using the band as resistance. So when you go to escape a press, down obviously, and pushing up like that, the band is the resistance, and you're trying to get even between left and right. Now the only thing you'll feel in the shoulder at this point is a bit of tightness through here, especially if you've got a bit of frozen shoulder recovering like I have, you get a bit in there, but it's nice and safe, it's a good strengthening one. That one we then progress to the wall, because the week before was single arm, um, just loading, now we can do single arm on the wall. So in this position here, good old favorite, one arm scapular press, awesome for winging, but the big thing about this is we're not just tackling some winging, we're tackling serratus anterior strengthening, but we're also trying to load up this joint. I mean, this joint needs the ability to strengthen and put load through it. And this is a nice, safe way of doing it. The load here is just the fact that I'm on an angle against the wall. So at that point there, there's a bit of load, and I push away, it gets a little bit easier, all right? So that one there is a really nice way for me to start my sort of pressing ability. You notice we're not doing any push-ups or anything like that. The most amount of pressing stuff we're doing is on the floor and on the wall. Now, what we want to aim for is also some pulling work. Now, your pulling work, you're a lot safer to do pulling work inside weeks 11 and 12 with band, with load, than pressing. All right, because the pressing stuff involves the surgical problem a lot more, pulling not so much. But I'm still not going from a height. That's next week. So this week, I want you to work on just strengthening work and a one-arm row like that. Be careful though, I mean I've progressed from probably this band to this band to the mini power band over a period of like 10 days. So you're not just going to do one band for the same thing. You, you, it depends on how strong you are and how bad your surgery is. So this one here, you're going to aim for classic one arm rows, making sure the shoulder blade kicks back first, then you pull through, keeping that shoulder blade back to protect load through the front. And then when you return, that stays back and then releases, okay? So not only are you strengthening through here, you're trying to actually improve how well your shoulder moves through a row. So when you go back doing lat pull downs and rows and chin ups in time, you've got good shoulder mechanics because they go haywire with injury and surgery. This is your chance to get them better while you're buying your time when you're not allowed to strengthen heavy. So use these opportunities to do the boring stuff because it's so important for your control. So one arm rows is a great one. I'm also doing extension. That's easy stuff. And again, you don't need to do eccentric with that. That's just swinging through. Same thing with the shoulder, back, kicking back, gets a little bit of isometric tricep, lots of rear delt, which is exactly what you need. Now, in my previous video, we were doing eccentrics. Now, that's where I go out here, rolling in. Now, watch the eccentric video that I've done previously. That's really important to learn about why you're doing eccentrics. The other one we're doing is also a bit of internal. These you'll find really easy. However, if you're someone who's had, like a patient of mine who's had a full major rotator cuff repair, like I've had a big rotator cuff repair here, he's had a massive one. So what they call, the surgeons call them big and massive. Big one is where you've had your supraspinatus reattached, you've had a bursectomy, craniofasti, and your bicep tendinesis. A massive 
because then you've also had your subscapularis attached as well. Now, my patient did it because he got knocked over and he put his arm out and it just tore everything. So the supraspinatus tore off, the bicep tore off and went Popeye, and the subscap tore off. Now that's horrendous. So he had to have it all reattached and all bang, one hit. Now, if you imagine that's attached, if I start doing concentric work like this, now my subscap is fine, so I can do this all day. He can't, so just be careful that even though this is in a program, you might have to do that eccentrically, so only working on that phase, and the way you do that, pull back, and they're pretty easy stuff, okay? So those are some of the band ones. Now, there's a lot of other things going on, including just simple active movement, like doing lots of reps of flexion, lots of reps of abduction, okay? But the interesting ones we're also gonna do is ones that are quite difficult, but they're safe for the shoulder. Now, they're called sort of horizontal abduction, if you like. Now, you do them in two different positions. Now, the surgeons love these ones because they really target the sort of short lever isometric part of the shoulder. So the first one you do, I hope you can hear me here, is ab basically horizontal abduction, which is basically going that way, in 90 degrees. So as long as you can get your arm into 90 degrees like this, as long as you've got enough range, you're trying to actually lift your elbow and your shoulder at the same time. Now, when you're stiff in the shoulder, you're probably gonna compensate a little bit here, all right? But you're aiming to actually get your hand higher than your elbow. So when I come up, I've gotta try and get my hand higher than my elbow. So I'm doing a little bit of lateral rotation at the same time, which builds up my lateral external rotation strength, but I'm also doing a bit of delt, rear delt work, that horizontal, bang, abduction. You might want to call it a horizontal extension if you like. That's your first one. Second one is you go into what, like, what we call a prone Y, which is up in this point. So you're sort of going from, you're not at 90 and you're not at 180, you're sitting around about 120, 150 into that position there. And what you're trying to do is leverage from this point and your scapula and lift that off the ground and down again without compensating through your back or pushing too hard in your hand. You're just trying to go from there and then go, think, shoulder blade, hand, hold, and down, without compensating too much through your back. Now that's reasonably difficult, as far as it feels difficult, but it's safe for the shoulder, it's okay. You're not reefing through amounts of amount, massive amounts of load. The load is your arm, so it's active range of movement, technically, all right? There is strength in there, but there's not resisted strengthening, okay? So it's pretty safe in that regards. Now the last two inside this program which might interest you guys a little bit more is how do you do bicep and tricep if you don't have weights at home and you've got a shoulder injury? This is interesting stuff. So at the moment, what you can do is throw that high, okay? This is your resistance for your tricep. Now what you do, this is exactly, think of like going to the gym and doing a tricep bar pull down on a cable machine, okay? Get a band, throw it over a door, throw it over a rig, put your trusty broomstick in that, and then you step away as far as you like for the resistance, and shoulders back, there's your tricep pull down, okay? So simple stuff. Now, the good thing about this is it's pretty kind on the shoulder because guess what, the shoulder's static. Well, it should be static. You shouldn't be sort of doing this sort of thing, okay? You need to be back getting that good posture and working on trying to just isolate your tricep because trust me, when you've had shoulder surgery, that whole arm goes skinnier than your other arm. And if you've already got skinny arms like me, it's even worse. But you've gotta be sensible and safe about how you're gonna build that back up not just for aesthetic purposes, and make sure you don't chase the aesthetic stuff. You've got to do it for function. You've got to get your tricep and your bicep bigger and stronger simply for shoulder function, okay? Because they're attached into the shoulder. So if you think of your bicep, my one's been attached, like screwed in, chopped off, okay? That has got a lot of weakness in it. I need that better. If I ever gonna throw a ball again, I need that better, all right? So tricep one's pretty easy. Work on how much band resistance you want. You could use one of these if you like. Okay, so you go really light. But I've done this for a bit, you can progress up and really get that strengthening and tone back in those triceps. That's the easy way of doing it. You could also just do one arm, so this sort of thing, 
one arm strengthening as well. I'll leave it up to you. The bicep one, you'll probably find because there's a bit of gravity, different leverages, and if you've had bicep surgery, you have to go lighter. So what I suggest you do, put a band, a lighter one like this, throw it around a carabiner, bottom of rig, that sort of thing. It could be underneath the sofa, chair leg, whatever. Then you use these two loops, same drill, okay? Into there, step away, have those shoulders and posture really good, and up you go. Now you'll find this is a lot less sort of strength, it feels like it's a lot less strengthening, but you've got to be careful of this bicep tendon, okay? You've got to watch your posture, and you can't afford to overload it, because if you overload a little bit and it aches, then you can't do all your shoulder work. So make sure that is a very light band and you graduate that up over a period of time. So there's my exercises, just some of them inside that stage of weeks 11, 12. See you next time.